heard people tell me pastor life is beautiful life is awesome and uh, life is a roller coaster there are some people who say life is not a bed of roses isn't it we go through ups and downs good times and bad times when we go through a good time we rejoice we thank god for the good time but many times we as children of god as believers when we go through a tough time we cannot comprehend why we go through difficulties in spite of serving god and then we ask god god why is this happening in my life what wrong did i do because life is not turning out to be what i expected in my life friends i want to talk to your message entitled god's ways many times we cannot really understand the way god works in our life there are people who ask if god is a just god why are there are so many people dying of hunger why is there is violence in the world and yet there are people who ask if god is real in my life why am i going through difficulties bitterness betrayal rejection failure in spite of being a child of god and this morning i want to bring to you a message which talks about god's ways from the book of habakkuk habakkuk also had a similar thought in his mind he was living in a time where the southern kingdom he was a part of he was a prophet to the southern kingdom and the southern kingdom was not going on well they had gone away from god they brought in lot of foreign idols they went away from the presence of god they sinned against god and god slowly started oppressing them god started uh, stopping their blessings and they went through a tough patch the crops were not doing well businesses went bad but even though god was punishing habakkuk's people uh, god did it in his loving kindness so that he will bring out his glory through what god was doing but habakkuk and the people around could not understand why would god do this to them because they are god's own country and what did habakkuk do complain to god like all of us we all ask god god why this why am i going through this in spite of serving you why is there cancer in my family in spite of serving you and being dedicated at my workplace why am i going through a job loss how long lord how long will you be silent and habakkuk starts questioning god habakkuk first starts off this chapter by questioning god complaining to god come to see habakkuk's complaint in chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 we have habakkuk's complaint how long lord this is most of our talks lord how long will i go through this how long should i suffer what did i do to deserve this habakkuk is asking how long lord must i call for help but you do not listen or i cry to you violence but you do not say why do you make me look at injustice why do you tolerate wrong there are people who are wronging me coming and attacking me and i am your child don't you understand why do you tolerate that why do you allow bad things to happen to me now that i am a child of god destruction and violence are before me there is strife and conflict abounds was for therefore the law is paralyzed lord i am going to the court because my brother has not given me my share and when i go to court the law is paralyzed there is injustice in the legal system justice never prevails the wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted look at his complaint to god lord nothing is happening as what i expect and why is it happening what wrong did i do lord what did we do wrong to you and if you look at habakkuk's time and today's time in the 21st century i think more or less it is the same in our own lives look at the comparison between habakkuk's time and now in the 21st century compare it with your own life and compare it with the nation and other nations of the world number 1 verse 2 says violence can you see violence all around lord why is there violence we are worshiping you we don't have an answer why i should come to church and lose my beloved ones worshiping you violence all around the world 
verse 3 talks about injustice wrong doing destruction all around we know the familiar pictures of the world trade center coming down why all this lord why is there violence if god is really the god who created this world why is the world going through this destruction strife and conflict is there conflict absolutely in the world around us we sometimes go through conflict and was for law is paralyzed do you ever wonder looking at the newspapers today and the justice system today that the innocent are not getting justice and why is the law paralyzed and the verse four again says justice never prevails and more so what we are going through in, in our lives and in the nations around the world we face a similar situation as the times of habakkuk now habakkuk cries to the lord and i don't know when but god decides to answer habakkuk and god when he god answered it the answer was in a very unusual way we mostly how do we pray lord i pray for my child to get mbbs admission and we know in our mind which college and we have made everything and we want god to answer us according to what we have already thought about right and that's what we pray because we have all predetermined plans and we are praying to the lord so that god will answer according to what we have planned but do you know god never answers like that and when god answered habakkuk it was a very unusual answer listen to this answer you will be surprised look at a lord's answer verse 5 to verse 7 look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for i am going to do something in your days that you would not believe habakkuk you are praying for an answer but when i am going to answer you and when you are going to see my answer you are not going to believe because my answer is totally contrary to what you are praying what habakkuk would have prayed lord we are going through failure we are going through injustice because we have sinned or send us some punishment and revive us and make us your people again give us good days refreshing all days but god is saying i am going to do something i have plans to do something and you will not even believe what i plan to do with your life or with juda that's what god is telling for i am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told you know why god sometimes doesn't tell us because even in spite of god telling us we may not believe god and then in verse 6 i am rising up the babylonians oh they can't hear the word of the babylonians who are the babylonians they are the pagans from the east they are the ones the world superpower now this is the southern kingdom of juda habakkuk is prophesying to juda you know that after solomon the kingdom of israel divided into two the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom did terrible sins and that time the superpower were the assyrians with their capital in nineveh and jonah went to nineveh do you remember and that's why jonah did not want to go to nineveh because they are their enemies and the assyrians came and overpowered the northern kingdom israel and took them into captivity now the assyrians have lost its power because god raises people into power and god brings down people from power and raises somebody else to power now the babylonians became a superpower and the babylonians went and attacked the assyrians and now they are the superpower and god is telling habakkuk look at those babylonians they eat away countries like a sandstorm in the desert they gather up all their enemies they laugh at the fortified cities and And those people they are going to come into your country overpower you defeat you destroy you and take you captive to babylon and that's the plan that i have for you and if i tell you you will not ever believe it look at the plan of god i am rising up the babylonians that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own they are a feared and dreaded people they are the law to themselves they have no law whatever they decide is the law and they promote their own honor and uh, such people are going to come and overpower you and take you into captivity habakkuk received a very disturbing answer very unusual answer has it happened to you it has happened to me i had lot of dreams in my life growing up I said Lord I want to do this for what your glory and God said full stop time 
you are not going to do what you plan i have a different plan for you and it feels very unusual when god stops our plans and god lets his plan unfold in our life so habakkuk was puzzled what was a problem that was going through habakkuk's mind lord number 1 why is god inactive why is my god silent looking at the injustice why is god silent when i am asking and i am praying to god why is god silent my enemies are working against me and there looks like they are going to be victorious but why o lord are you silent and secondly why god you do not hear my cry why don't you hear my cry lord i am praying to you i am a child of god i pray i'm praying for a job i'm praying for my business i'm praying for my family but looking at the reality it seems nothing is happening lord why don't you hear my prayer don't we have such questions in our mind and the third question the third problem that rattled him that lord when you answer why do you answer that way why do you answer this way it is much contrary to what i expected what is happening in my life why do you answer my life in this such particular situation friends i know most of you are sitting here with such questions in life sometimes we as human we go through habakkuk's problem nothing wrong he is a prophet of god and he had this problem and in this 11 verses i want to make you understand better the ways of god so that you will know how god is dealing in your life you will know better how god is dealing in your family and you will be able to discern how god is dealing in the world around us the ways of god number 1 god's ways are mysterious no man can fathom no one can understand what god has planned for you he has a unique plan for you and a purpose for you and his ways for you is mysterious nobody can understand that and what is the mystery of god's ways number 1 is god's inaction is mysterious sometimes we pray and pray and pray and we commit ourselves to god and we fast and pray and we go to work we do our best and and we ask something of the lord and it looks like god is silent on the other side and god's inaction when god seems silent when we don't hear anything from god it may seem very mysterious to us friends it is not surprise people in the bible went through that Look at Abraham God called him out of his father's house come son I am going to give you son in your old age if you just come out of your father's house and go to the place where I promised you and here Abraham comes out of his father's house and he's believing God chapter 15 God made a wonderful covenant with Abraham and uh, in that covenant God said to him again that I will give you a child but decades have passed more than two decades have passed in his life and abraham is not seeing a sign of promise god is silent on one side and uh, abraham is thinking lord i have lost my capacity to rear a child i'm not strong anymore and my wife has become very old and there is no way and you are silent on the other side abraham the father of faith sometimes felt god was silent look at mary and martha this was a house that jesus very commonly used to visit and be spending time with mary and martha but when it mattered the most when their beloved brother jesus true friend probably he died jesus was not around they could not hear any voice from god and they would have thought lord why are you silent you were here you were having supper here probably he slept in their house and now lazarus is dead at least if you can come before he is buried there is some hope and he's buried and four days have passed by and there is no sign from god sometimes god's inaction is mysterious in our life friends let me tell you if god is silent doesn't mean that god is not acting he is always working behind the scene for you and we cannot understand how many of you believe that there is a sun out there yes we have seen the sun god created the sun but do you know that there are dark days where you cannot see the sun will you ever go out and say that sun is not there no you believe there is a sun and the sun is going around the earth 
like that when we go through dark clouds in our life we don't deny that god is not working we believe my god is there he is working on my behalf god's silence may be mysterious but i understand as a child of god that my god is working for me behind the scenes hallelujah amen secondly god's providences are mysterious the way god provides for us is absolutely mysterious do you know how god provided for elijah he said go and hide near kerith ravine i will take care of you and there as he was waiting the ravens came with bread there is famine all around but it's a mystery how god provided elijah and how many of us have seen the mysterious provisions of god upon our lives his provisions are mysterious but do you know god not only blesses us in a mysterious provision god sometimes stop that blessing in a mysterious provision that's tough for us to take god builds a business god brings down business god gives us a job god takes us away from a job god's providence is mysterious amen and we need to tell god even though i am losing my job i know that i am going through no job in my life i know that you are providing for me this time there was a time when the ravens came and there was a time when the ravens stopped mysterious lord what happened to me i am listening to you the ravens have stopped coming the brook is drying elijah is telling god's providences i also say that is god's denial is god's provision amen when god denied him the kerith ravine when god denied him the bread for the day god was redirecting god was providing for elijah in zarephath i don't know what doors have closed upon your life maybe you're going through a tough time in your job in your family in your health in your finances but i want to tell you god is working behind the scenes and god's provisions are mysterious and habakkuk could not come in terms with all this thirdly god's instruments are mysterious sometimes god uses unusual people unusual ways to work with his people what was the mysterious person over here the king of babylon the babylonians how come lord you allow the babylonians who worship a pagan god to come and fight against israel who worship the yahweh god by the way in the olden days when the kingdoms fought it was not people who fought it was not the nations who fought it was deities who fought their god and the other kingdoms god fought and which god is powerful that god would win you see their mindset in the old testament so now they can ever imagine because their god is almighty god and the babylonians god is a pagan god the idols and they can never imagine in their mind that god can use the babylonians as god's instruments to bring israel to the very purposes of god that's why i'm telling you god is much beyond that thing his provisions his instruments are mysterious we are in the book of habakkuk but much before the book of habakkuk is the book of isaiah and isaiah all these prophetic books are prophesying regarding something in the future when habakkuk is prophesying to judah that you will be taken captive by the babylonians and they will take you to captive isaiah is prophesying much beyond the captivity he is telling that after babylonians three kings will come the lord knows the sovereignty of what is about to happen in his wisdom he knows and he's prophesying that after babylonians the persians are going to overpower the babylonians and the persian there is going to be a king a foreign king who is going to release the same people from captivity uh, in the time of god come to isaiah chapter 44 verse 28 is a fast forward prophecy regarding what will happen after exile who says of cyrus he is my shepherd when god is using isaiah to prophesy about cyrus cyrus is not even born the world has not seen cyrus but look at god's instruments he is telling who says of cyrus he is my shepherd who is cyrus by the way 
Cyrus is the king of Persia and the Persians were pagans. They worship idols. They worship spirits. And God is telling, he is my shepherd. He is my instrument. And I will accomplish all that I please. He says of Jerusalem, let it be rebuilt. He is going to tell that the this city that is destroyed by the Babylonians is let it be rebuilt and the temple be rebuilt, let its foundation be laid. You see, and the Babylonians, God used to destroy the temple and destroy God's people in Jerusalem. Much before that, Isaiah prophesied, another king, Cyrus is going to allow funds for building the kingdom, building the temple and building Jerusalem. Look at God's sovereignty and look at the instruments that God used in his wisdom unusual instruments for the glory of his name. And what else God talks about Cyrus? Chapter 45 verse 1. This is what the Lord says to his anointed. Talking about Cyrus. Whose right hand I take hold of. So God is calling Cyrus his shepherd, his anointed, and I take hold of the right hand of Cyrus. What am I talking? I am telling God's instruments are mysterious. Amen. You may be thinking, why people are working against me? That is an instrument of God. Not to destroy you. Not to put you down. But for the greater glory in the days to come. God's instruments are mysterious. You may be going through a pain this morning. You may be going through a failed dream. I tell you, God is working behind the scene. Because at the end, it is for the glory of God. Your life is going to turn out. Amen? So God's ways are mysterious. Secondly. Listen to this even more carefully. God's ways are misunderstood. God's ways are misunderstood. No man can properly understand the wisdom of God. No world can understand the wisdom of God. God's ways cannot be understood fully by human beings. If you break your head, you cannot understand what God is doing for your life. You just got to trust God. That is a walk of faith. So don't break your head why this is happening, why that person is against me, why my work is not going on fine, why is there sickness in my life. No, because you can never understand what God is doing in your life. You just got to trust God. God's ways are misunderstood. Who are the people who misunderstand God's ways? God's own people. First of all, God's people, not always, sometimes misunderstand God's ways. God's people sometimes misunderstand God's ways. I went for an interview to go to Singapore and at a young age for my tool and die making course, I was selected for that interview and uh, I was working in HMT watch factory then, a good job, good society and they said you are selected for this interview shine, you can put down your papers, we are going to present your papers for a work permit from Singapore government and the moment the work permit comes your ticket will come and this is your package. And they gave me an appointment letter in hand, a beautiful company in Singapore. I said, Lord, my dreams are going to be established. I could not go to Australia, but I can go to Singapore. I went very happily, put down my papers in HMT Watch Factory, because I know the next month I'm traveling. They gave me a date. I got the appointment letter in my hand. And the interviewers went back to Singapore. It was a Chinese company. And uh, they put my papers to the government for the work permits. You have to go, the Singapore government has to give us a work permit. Till now, no one has been rejected. But that day, they presented my work permit. The government did a nuclear test in Pokhran. Okay? Pokhran nuclear test. International sanctions were against India. And the Singapore government decided, till it is lifted up, we are not taking any more contract from India. My visa permit was rejected. I was hopeless. I lost my job. I lost my opportunity to go outside. God's ways are mysterious. Sometimes God's people cannot understand God's ways. I was broken. I could not understand God. I became bitter. Lord, why is this happening to me? All my dreams have shattered. But today, I can look back and tell all that happened to me was the grace of God in my life. Friends, God's people sometimes 
misunderstand God's ways. Habakkuk misunderstood. Come to Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe. We can never believe sometimes what God is doing in our lives. Why? Because we misunderstand the ways of God. Why could not they believe? Because how can they go to the Babylonians? But do you know what God was doing? God was sending them to Babylon to prepare them for the glory of the coming kingdom. You understand what I'm telling you? Prepare Israel for the glory of the coming Messiah. So they need to be prepared. There is a glory that is coming. And many times we believers forget that suffering goes before glory in our lives. We only want the day of joy. We want the days of glory. But there is no resurrection without the cross. Amen. If Jesus had to go through suffering, you and I have to go through suffering before we experience the glory of God. In the God's greater plan of the kingdom, what God did was just by taking them to Babylon. In God's greater plan for your life, what God is doing in your life is not questionable. It is perfectly right and perfectly okay because the glory of the days to come is nothing compared to the suffering I'm going through today. They did not believe and they were punished, severely punished. The Babylonians overpowered them and took them captive, destroyed the temple and the towns and the gates completely. You know, when Jesus came, he spoke the parable in Matthew 21 about a servant having a vineyard. A man having a vineyard. And he sent a lot of servants to the vineyard. Talking about Israel. That many prophets were sent like Habakkuk, Zechariah, Malachi, Isaiah, Jeremiah. And what did they do? They put the servants, the workers to death. They said, we don't believe what God says. God spoke through these prophets, but there were nobody believing these prophets. That's why the Bible says, what God says, man cannot believe. None of them believe the prophets. They put the prophet to the pit. Some prophets were killed because man can never understand the ways of God. And they were punished because of that. And then finally, the Messiah came. Jesus Christ came. In that parable, Jesus said, Finally, putting all the servants to death, the owner of the vineyard sent his own son. They tied him and put him to death. They did not believe Jesus. The Jewish people did not believe Jesus. And they put him to death. And then in the time of Paul, Paul takes up the same verse and he's telling, if I tell you God's promise, you guys will not believe. Come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, and it's verse 41. Look. You scoffers, wonder and perish. Same words here. For I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe even if somebody told you. Paul is taking the same statement from the book of Habakkuk and he's talking, going to the synagogues after the resurrection of Jesus and he's telling that Jesus is your Messiah. And the synagogues are rejecting Jesus. No, Jesus is not a Messiah. We put him to death. And Paul is going and telling in the synagogues that believe the word of God I am speaking. Jesus is the Messiah. And they did not believe Paul. What did they do? They chased him out of the synagogue. They put him to death. They martyred Paul. Paul was martyred for the sake of the gospel by the Jewish Sanhedrin. And the Romans did it. And what punishment came? In AD 70, after the days of Paul, the Romans came and destroyed the temple of God. Not one stone was left on another. Jewish men and women were slaughtered and they ran towards the end of the world because they did not believe God. Friends, you know what happened? Jesus says again the same thing. Many believers don't believe that the world is, uh, the, the, church, the church age is going to come to an end. Now, the Bible says Jesus is coming back. But there are many believers who don't want to hear that. Many preachers who don't want to speak on the second coming. 
Because when Jesus comes, what is he going to do? He's going to judge the world. And no church wants to hear that. Why? Because they don't want to believe that he's coming. Second Peter chapter 3 and it's verse 3 onwards. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffing and following their own evil desires. You find that in the church? Absolutely. In the kingdom of God, in the church, we can find this. This is a prophecy. They will say, where is this coming? He has promised. Jesus has promised that he is coming. But where is it? It's been so many years. 2000 years and Jesus has not come. Ever since our fathers died. Everything goes on as it has been. Since the beginning of creation. Again the world and some people in the church. Don't believe that Jesus is coming. And judgment is coming. Believers don't like to hear that. But like in the days of Habakkuk. Like in the days of Jesus and Apostle Paul, I want to tell you that Jesus is coming back again and he is going to judge the world in justice. Be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Amen. You know what Jesus did? The expectation of the Jewish people was the kingdom. The Messiah will come, the kingdom will be established. But when the Messiah came, the Jews did not receive the king. The Jews were the instrument to bring the Gentiles into the kingdom. Which they failed. So the Messiah, Jesus, extended the kingdom. The Old Testament looked forward for the kingdom. Now the church has come in. We are looking forward for the kingdom of God. Like in the Old Testament. One day Jesus is going to come back. He is going to judge this world. And a kingdom of peace and righteousness. Is going to be established in this earth. The Bible is telling. If I tell you. You would not believe. There is only a few minority in this world. Who believes Jesus is coming. There's a minority who believes that judgment is coming. Everybody is like Sodom and Gomorrah. They are telling that the city cannot be destroyed. But without warning the city was destroyed. It is like the days of Noah. He went again and prophesied that it's going to rain. And God is going to judge the world. Everybody mocked at him and scorned at Noah. And they started doing about their own business. They had no time for God. They had no time to hear of God. They had no time to repent and come back to God. But Noah worked and the ark was completed. And the floods came and people perished. God's ways are misunderstood. By God's own people. Not only about judgment. But the way God leads us. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he blocks our progress. People misunderstand God's way. Friends I want to tell you. No matter what is happening in your life. It is God who is directing your life. Amen. Amen. Secondly. God's ways are misunderstood by the world. God's ways are misunderstood by the world. Now I am talking about the world. The worldly people. And the worldly powers. What did the worldly people do? What was the attitude of Babylon when they won over Judah? Come to Habakkuk chapter 1 and it's verse 11. They sweep past like the wind and go on. Look at their attitude. Guilty men whose own strength is their God. After they defeated the Judah... They are telling, patting their back, it is my power. Because of our pagan gods, we have come to this power and defeated even Yahweh's people. They started patting the back. They never realized that God was using Babylon as an instrument for his glory. Because God raises people, God brings down nations. Today there are many people around the world patting their back. Taking the credit for all that the countries are doing. False credit. But nobody realizes that God brings people to position. After God has fulfilled their plan. God brings down people from position. Look at Romans chapter 13. And it's verse 1. Romans chapter 13. There is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist today have been established by God. 
No one dare say that I climb the ladder of success. My house is my hard work. My family is my hard work. No. Whatever you and I have is given by God. Whoever is in power is brought by God. And God knows to do anything with the people of this world. God's ways are misunderstood by the world. I spoke about two aspects and I want to conclude. Number one, God's ways are mysterious. Secondly, God's ways are misunderstood. Finally, this is the final one. God's ways are moral. In other words, God's ways are always right. Whatever God does in your life, it may be painful, but it is right for you. Amen? We don't have to question God. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 6. I am rising up the Babylonians. They cannot believe. But God is telling through this. It is God who rose up the Babylonians. Because he knows what he is doing. Because Babylon is going to oppress Judah. And that is going to purify Judah. That is going to purify Israel. And that is going to prepare them for the coming glory in the kingdom of God. Friends, you are looking at the world around and looking at injustice, peacelessness. And thinking, what is happening to the world around us? You know what every incident is telling us? Every incident is correctly marked in God's timetable for the fulfillment of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is his bigger picture. So what happens? Everything that happens in individual Christian lives, your life, my life, your life, every pain, every progression, everything is keeping the glory in the kingdom, God is leading us. So if I go through a temporary suffering, praise God, God is always right. If I go through a sickness in my house, sudden operation in my house, I don't have to come question God because God is working behind the scene. God is always right. All things work together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Friends, let me ask you, if you're here with questions about your life, if you're here with questions about your tomorrow, not understanding what is happening in and around your life, people have come to accuse you, people have come to talk against you, your business is not going fine, your job is not going fine, there is no peace in the family, there are children that are rebelling, can you just tell God, I know you are perfectly on timetable. There's a time to be born and time to die. There's a time for me to suffer and there's a time for me to be glorified. I will not murmur, but I will be still and know that you are my God. Amen? Tell God, I will trust in you. No matter what I go through, what pain or what glory I go through, I don't want to falter. I want to trust you like a child. In this pain, in this storm, I will trust you. I know there are people who have risen against me, but I will trust you.